Since we covered ASRock uh, B650 Easter Legend Wi-Fi, it would be a shame not to compare it with B650 Pro RS. And I'm going to use the same processor and everything uh, the same just to see the comparison between those two boards because this one is more affordable and might be more um, suitable for you guys that are looking something more cheaper. Now, first of all, we're going to go through the specifications and check out everything that this motherboard has when we're talking about connectivity and some features that you might find interesting. So it supports AMD Ryzen 7000 series processors with CPU socket AM5 and chipset B650. Power phase is 14 plus 2 plus 1 SPS power design and it supports 4 times DDR5 up to 6200 megahertz. We have one PCI Express 4.0 times 16, one PCI Express 3.0 times 16, one PCI Express 4.0 times 1 and one M.2 key E for Wi-Fi. It has two display outputs, HDMI and DisplayPort and some cool features. We have storage blazing M.2 Gen 5 times 4, Hyper M.2 Gen 4 times 4 and one M.2 PCI Express Gen 3 times 2 and SATA 3 plus 4 SATA 3 connectors. For audio we have 7.1 channel HD audio Realtek ALC897 audio codec with Nahimic Audio and basically some other stuff. So we have Dragon 2.5 gigabit per second LAN. We have Blazing M.2 with multi-layer heatsink to dissipate the heat much, much better for the PCI Gen 5x4. Flexible integrated IO shield, which is I think maybe even the first time I see on such board that is lower than the, let's put it, the X version or the much better B version. Now for the I.O. ports uh, at the back of the board, we have BIOS flashback button, we have display port, HDMI, 4 USB 2.0, then additional 2 USB 2.0, we have 1 USB 3.2 generation 2 type A and type C, 2.5G LAN and 2 USB 3.2 generation 1 with audio in, out and microphone. Now comparing the B650 uh, Pro RS with the B650E Steel Legend Wi-Fi, we have some interesting results and let's get to those. Now as I stated, I use completely the same uh, configuration except for the cooling, uh, which the cooling was uh, in past build, the uh, EKAIO Elite 280. Here we have Vortex 240 from Antec. And uh, let's start with AIDA64 Extreme Edition. So with CPU, FPU, memory, cache and blah, 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 stuff like that, you already know that, 60 degrees Celsius while here, we have 66. This is the difference just with the AIO, so it doesn't have to do anything with the motherboard, but yeah, I like to mention that. Now we have Indigo Benchmark, which is quite interesting. We have Bedroom, the first benchmark, and with the B650 Steel Legend Wi-Fi, I got 2,127 points, while with the B650 Pro RS, I got 2,135 points. Now in Supercar, uh, the B650 is still legend, 4463, while the Pro RS 4540. But with the Pro RS, the AMD Ryzen 5600X goes by one Celsius degree higher, so 78 compared to the B650 is still legend, which is 77. Now with those two tests, uh, I just wanted to see the difference. And usually I would go with much in-depth benchmarks when we're talking about the uh, scores and everything but honestly I think we can see already from this that the benchmark results with the MD Ryzen 5 7600X are uh, slightly better on this board than the than on the B650 Steel Legend Wi-Fi. Now also let's check out some M.2 speeds which I haven't done on the B650E Steel Legend. So uh, Samsung 990 Pro with one terabyte of storage, which is Gen 4 times 4 in Crystal Disk Mark reached on read speed 7.4 gigabits per second speed, even getting close to 7.5 gigabits per second speed, while the write is 6.9 gigabits per second, which is of course outstanding when we're talking about uh, lower let's say lower grade uh, motherboard than that you're used to in terms of thermals on the processor just by one degree celsius i won't even bother uh, actually maybe just go with a 
a thicker or a larger radiator because after all we did had 280 and 240 so there's that but the board is looking quite nice first of all the visual aspect is quite okay but when we take into consideration the cooling we have quite massive passive heat sinks on the VRMs on, and on the first M.2 slot which actually gives uh, some more confidence uh, that the cooling will be done good especially in the VRMs and the cool thing is that they are designed in multi-layers so the heat can dissipate quite nicely and when you have a proper uh, cooling inside your case the fans will blow directly through the passive heat sink you won't get stuck if you have a thick full body of a passive heat sink doesn't have a possibility for air to flow through it this actually does and it actually makes more sense the board has enough connections i would say quite enough connections when we're talking about addressable rgb headers and especially pwm headers so i won't worry about that after all i think you might be going with a controller for addressable rgb or at least for the fan speeds but all in all it's quite all right the connections at the back on the io port is basically quite all right the usb 2.0 can be used for standard peripherals while you use the high bandwidth ones for transferring your data so there's that i would say if you're looking for a more affordable motherboard for your md ryzen 5 7600x uh, compared to the steel legend uh, this board will actually give you the same or even better performance uh, when we're talking about uh, processor speeds and benchmarking results and the, the thermals only depend on the AIO. So this board is actually quite good and I'm actually quite surprised. Even though visual aspect of the Steel Legend, I like it much more than the Pro RS. But still, it's not a hideous board, don't get me wrong. It's just a different approach and it's more minimalistic. Even though I do have to say I do like more minimalistic. But the Steel Legend is more i would say familiar in uh, terms of that so yeah quite cool uh, i think they used the same approach to every board in this generation where we're talking about eight layer of pcb blazing m.2 ssds of course with multi-layer heatsink uh, quite nice cooling for the vrms great uh, connections great uh, storage capacities and uh, even great speeds on the ddr5 so yeah outstanding i would say now this board is in the links below so the asrock b650 pro rs so you can check out the prices as well as the md ryzen 5 7600x so maybe you could pair it up and maybe go with certain build like i did right here and maybe pair it up with the rx 6650 xt or maybe just wait for the next gen coming quite soon so yeah that would be quite cool if you're new to the channel and you haven't ticked and haven't clicked on the box where it says subscribe i would suggest you do so so you don't miss any future videos reviews and everything else and of course thank you for watching today's one see you next time bye bye guys